Hello, everybody, and today we are back with another 2020 presidential election prediction. Um, we're currently 10 days out from the election. I guess to be very precise, we are, if you can match up my timer, we are 10 days, 4 hours, 33 minutes, and 55 seconds until the 2020 general election on November 3rd. So this is my 2020 election prediction for president 10 days out from November 3rd, um, and I think it's going to be very interesting. So... Without further to do, let's get directly to the safe states and the likely states. I'm going to probably go through these pretty quickly. Um, not really much to talk about with them, but... Um, sorry, I didn't mean to use Delaware yet, but that'll go soon. So 115 for the Democrats. It's all usually the same stuff that I have. Um, so yeah, not nothing's really changing with safe and likely for me. Um, but... There will be a few changes. I know some people think that Nebraska's, I think, first or third congressional district is, is like, um, what do you want to call it? Um, more competitive this year. It's not really. I've been looking at the polls, especially in the district, and I'm also looking at the results from the 2016 election. It's not really that competitive. It's not even likely. But... Let's get to the likely Democrat states. Washington, Illinois is likely. Not a safe state. Safe states are states that are just completely Democratic. Um, and I'll keep off with that. I'll give Biden New Jersey with likely. So, 168. Oh, and Maine's first congressional district. Always forget that. Now, likely for Republicans, Montana. It'll be a bit closer than some of these safe Republican states. But... 120, 125 for Republicans. So, 125, 169. Now we're going to get into the nitty-gritty stuff of the races. So, essentially, there is going to be, and pretty much, I guess you could take out a few states that I don't think are super, but 244 electoral votes that are honestly just up for grabs. I mean, anyone, I mean... It's perfectly feasible that anyone could have could win any of these states that are now on the map. Um, I mean, Joe Biden could even win Missouri or Montana or something like that, but these states right here, most importantly. So anyway, let's get to lean Democrat, Oregon, Colorado, or Connecticut. I don't think Trump's going to win them. He could, but I mean, it'd be very hard for him to do so. They're basically in the lean category due to the trends um, in 20... Um, excuse me, in 2008 against John McCain, Obama won Oregon by around 22 points. In 2012 against Mitt Romney, Obama won Oregon by around 17 points. In 2016, Clinton won Oregon by around 10 points. And then in the 2018 midterm elections, the governor, I think Kate Brown, she won that state by about six points. So it's definitely trending Republican, but it'll still stay in the lean Democrat column for this election. Same with Connecticut, same deal with Connecticut and Oregon, both trending red. Uh, which is a bit surprising. Nobody usually looks at the trends and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, but they'll still remain in the Democrat column. In states that are trending to the Democrat are going to be these three that were pretty much toss-up states last year. Now lean states. I don't characterize them as tilt at all. Um, Colorado, New Mexico, and Virginia. Uh they're all trending to the left. Virginia, probably the most out of all of them. They have two Democrat senators, a Democrat governor, a completely Democratic legislature. Very quickly, they're trending. They might even be eventually likely uh, in the next election, likely Democrat. Um, New Mexico may be likely, and Colorado. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, they're trending very rapidly, along with Arizona. Uh, Arizona and Texas and Georgia are all trending very rapidly. To the Democrats and South Carolina is slowly trending. So, should the trends hold up, they will eventually be eventually get closer to the Democrats unless the Republicans turn things around, which could happen this election. We don't know yet, but as of now, it's um, I I would I if if Gary Johnson didn't run in twenty sixteen, then it would have been actually a lot closer. So that's why New Mexico is not likely. It's only lean. Gary Johnson's not running. A lot of the libertarians are probably going to go to Trump's support, um, especially they support what he's doing with, uh, I think, uh, withdrawing the troops from the Middle East and um, 
I think, I don't think we've had a single, and I'm just off the memory, I don't think we've had a single war in the Middle East for Trump's presidency. So they really are like that, kind of like a Rand Paul type of situation. They support that a lot. And I think a lot of libertarians will come to Trump's side and not exactly vote for the libertarian presidential candidate. So I may come back to some lean Democrat states. I'm still thinking, but for lean Republican states, it's the four right here. So Texas, as I have mentioned, probably since I did my 50 days out presidential election prediction, the polls are definitely trending in Trump's favor. Like I said that they would, they're going to spread out a lot more. Trump's probably by election are going to be up by four or five points, four, five, six points. Pretty much like it is now, he's up by four points. He may increase that lead by a few points. Um, we'll see what it's like in 10 days. But it's going to go to Trump by a lean margin. Um, last year, it really was close, especially in the Senate race. However, that was a Democratic wave year. Uh, Ted Cruz managed to hold on to his seat, but definitely scary for Republicans. But Trump is still going to be able to manage on to hold on to Texas. The same reasons why Democrats could hold on to Connecticut and Oregon, because they do have a solid Republican identity. And they probably won't go to the other party until 2024, 2028. So we'll see what happens in the next decade, I guess. But same reasons with Georgia, except Georgia's more Democratic, or I guess uh, less Republican than Texas. Uh, definitely trending to the Democrats. However, Trump is still going to win. They, there was a recent poll. Uh, I'm not sure the pollster. It's not a Republican pollster, but they had Trump up for um, now I don't know if he'll win by four points. He may up, end up winning by two or three points. I characterize that as lean. Um, I think he'll, it'll retain its Republican identity for sure. Um, and that's honestly what I see happening. Georgia and Texas are kind of a similar situation. Georgia, definitely more democratic than Texas or Democrat than Texas, but still both retaining the re Republican identity. And with Iowa and Ohio, those states are the opposite of Georgia and Texas, both trending Republican. Um, Trump won Iowa by like 10 points and Ohio by 9 points, 8.5 and 9.5. But I just rounded it. Um, now, I don't think he'll win those states by that margins again, by those margins again, excuse me. But I do think that he'll win them by a lean margin. I see him winning Iowa by 5, 6 points, Ohio by 3, 4 points. Margins narrowing up a little bit, and that's honestly because Joe Biden is going to do better in these, uh, I guess, industrial um, Rust Belt states. They are part of the Rust Belt, I consider it at least kind of this area, which includes Iowa, Illinois, uh, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Michigan, Ohio, Indiana, Pennsylvania, all Rust Belt states. Uh, however, Indiana and Illinois aren't really much of a toss-up, but I do think he'll fare well better than Hillary in Ohio and Iowa, um, as I think almost any other Democrat candidate would. Um, so I'm actually going to characterize New Hampshire as a lean state and Maine at large as a lean state, honestly, because now I don't think Joe Biden's up by 11 points in the polls. I think that's very, very uh, inaccurate. However, I do think that he could be up by three or four points. That would give him a lean characterized win. Obviously, he identifies he's from Delaware, and I think he lived in Pennsylvania for a few years, so identifies with this Northeastern um, community, but, you know, it is still a toss-up state. It still has that identity. They have one Republican senator, Democrat senator, and then a Republican governor, and Hillary Clinton won the state in 2016, so it goes on and off, essentially. Uh, actually, I'm not sure if New Hampshire has a Republican senator, but um, anyway, has a Republican governor, two Democrat senators, I think. Hillary won it in 2016, uh, and I think Biden could win it in 2020, but um, yeah, I don't think he's up by 11 points, though, and I think most people understand that he's not up by 11 points, and I'm also going to give Maine's second congressional district to Trump by a lean margin, same reasons of Iowa and Ohio, the fact that it went to Trump by like 10 points, Biden's not up in it, uh, and I think most people understand Biden's not going to win Maine's second congressional district, so now let's go to tilt states. I think I've pretty much filled out everything else. Yes, I'm going to leave Minnesota up to the tilt and lean state or tilt, red, tilt, blue. So with tilt the Democrat, I'm actually going to go to tilt Republican first, which is I usually don't do that, but we're going to start with tilt Republican and then move over to tilt Democrat. Now tilt Republican is Nebraska 7th Congressional. Uh, Clinton won this by, I mean, Trump won this by around three points. 
it could narrow up to less than a percent. Joe Biden will do a bit better in this district. Uh, however, I still see that it retaining its Republican identity the only time it went to the Democrats or recently was when Obama won it in 08. But then again, McCain was a very bad candidate. So you could even argue that it'll go to Trump by a lean margin. Also, North Carol, uh, yeah, North Carolina is going to go tilt Republican. Um, same reasons with Florida. Now, Florida is actually looking a lot better for Trump than North Carolina is. Florida, um, now I understand, well, the poll margins are, are um, I, I know Biden's up in those poll margins, but they're going to narrow up, especially with the enthusiasm gap in Florida, a lot of mail-in voting, and actually a lot underestimated with the mail-in voting with the Democrats in Florida and in North Carolina, which is probably a bit shocking to Joe Biden and his campaign and the Democrats with Nancy Pelosi and trying to win those House races. But it's definitely a lower turnout than they expected or hoped for, which is not really good for them in Florida and in North Carolina. North Carolina, I think Trump could win by a more higher proportion of Republicans and Democrats there. It is a toss-up state, but it usually edges out Republicans, which is why Romney won it against Obama, while Obama won pretty much all the other toss-up states. So that's what I see right now for the Democrats or Republicans. But let's go over to New Nevada. And Arizona, Joe Biden flipping Arizona blue. Uh, as what I say right now, now I think Trump is going to catch up in this state. I think it's going to be close. I think Biden could end up winning by maybe one, one point five points in Arizona, one and a half points. Um, but he'll end up tilting the state blue. Could change. Um, Trump has been, I guess, campaigning there. Biden really has been doing a lot of the virtual campaigns, um, and we'll see how that works out for Biden. But as of now, he is still up in Arizona. Same with Nevada. Nevada and Arizona do overestimate Republicans in the polls, and I'm going off of past elections as well. So I still think that they'll definitely go to the Democrats uh, by tilt margins. So Joe Biden will flip Arizona blue. Now when we come up to the Rust Belt, I see Minnesota tilting blue. Recent poll had a very close, especially in the Senate race. I think it's pretty close. I think Biden may be up by one or two points in the state. Um, I have to actually look at the polls, but I know that Minnesota is narrowing up a lot, um, a lot more than people expected. And then again, Clinton only won that state by one and a half points in 2016. So it's definitely trending to the Republicans, but it just, the, the, the question is how quickly is it going to trend to the Republicans right now? I see it's still going blue. You know, the recent poll had Biden up by five, but come election day, Biden will be up by maybe three or four, and then he'll win by one or two points in Minnesota. So if you understand that, the, the polls in Minnesota always they actually overestimate their Democrats more often. If you look in 2016 and the 2018 midterms, you can tell that, but I still see Joe Biden taking the state. Now, talked a lot about Minnesota. We have three states left. Three entire states left in this prediction. I see Trump carrying on to Michigan. And that's honestly the state that he's faring the best in at the moment, which is a bit surprising. He won that by the least in 2016 out of the three Rust Belt states. He won it by 0.3%. Polling data shows that it's doing well for him. I know that RCP moved it to a lean, uh, lean Democrat column by election day. It's going to go back to toss-up. I'm almost positive about that. There's been some crazy polling data that suggests that Biden's up by 12, 11 points in this state. That's just not true. Um, it's just not true. Biden is not up by 12 points in Michigan. Most people understand that. And then, you know, come election day, we'll see. But I'm almost confident that Joe Biden is not up by 12 points. I've been to Michigan and I visited the place. A lot of these, uh, last this summer, actually, in a lot of these, um, a lot of the districts, that I went to, and I went to some toss-up districts. I didn't even do this because of a, whatever you want to call it, because of a political thing. I went there uh, on a vacation to see my family, and there were a lot more Trump signs than Biden signs, a lot more enthusiasm for Trump. And that's honestly what I feel like the thing is throughout the entire Rust Belt um, for Trump. So I do see Trump winning Wisconsin by a tilt margin. And with Pennsylvania, this is honestly going to be a true toss-up. Now, I'm not going to make it a toss-up just to end the video, but I'll see that I see hmm, this is honestly the hardest state 
Wisconsin's tilt Republican for the same reasons as Michigan. Pennsylvania is a very hard state, especially since Joe Biden is from Scranton, grew up there. Uh, the polls are actually probably the closest in Pennsylvania at the moment. Recent polling suggests Biden's up two, three in the state. He's not up 10 points. He's not up eight points in Minnesota. Um, they're not Minnesota, Pennsylvania. Including the margin of error, I do think that Trump could win the state, and he will win the state. He has some rallies planned for there. It's my prediction, honestly, has not changed at all. Like, really, at all. Which is a bit surprising for me. But I see the election pretty much set in stone. Things can change until the election day. But I just, honestly, I don't have much faith that these polls are going to be accurate. A lot of the pundits in 2016 saw a Clinton victory, but Clinton Clinton victory in the Rust Belt and in and and overestimating her in states like Ohio and Florida and North Carolina and and Iowa. And she honestly she never won by that. And she never she Trump won the election. Trump upset it upset the election. So, this is how I see it. 10 days out, I'll switch it all to one color for the new election map. Has not really changed for the past two to three weeks, but I like to keep you guys updated on my prediction and talk through things, go through things. Um, I'll have a Senate prediction out soon. There is going to be some changes with the Senate election prediction, but um, you know we are 10 days out from November 3rd, and it's getting a bit surreal that... We're gonna know if we're gonna have who who our next president's gonna be for the next four years. If we're gonna reelect Trump or elect Biden in ten days, if it's called election night, which um, I would hope it is. I think it's gonna be very chaotic if it's not. Um, but we'll see what happens. Right now, I have Trump winning the election, two ninety five, two forty three. Ten days to go. A lot could happen in ten days. The first, the second debate just ended out of two, because the third one never happened, but I guess the second one, whatever you want to phrase it as, um, and I think Trump did pretty good in the debate. I do think that he did a lot better than he did in the first debate. Um, I guess that's not hard for Trump to beat. All he has to do is just be a bit uh, calmer, but um, I don't really think the debate swayed many voters. I do take the consensus that most of the voters have their honest opinions of each candidate, and they're going to vote based on that. I don't think that a debate on October 22nd is going to change anything. So, 295, 243, I'll have a Senate production election, whatever you want to call it, maybe seven days out from the election, seven, eight days out. So I'll see you guys until then. Anyway, have a nice day. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I really appreciate it, and stay tuned for more videos. Thank you guys for watching.